typical kind of work-based learning. The kids get mentoring and they get professional uh, education, kind of life skills, soft skills. We're calling it professional education now um, to make it sound professional. Um, so what we're doing, we've talked to the Valdosta City Schools. The superintendent has um, endorsed it, was ex very excited. I've gone over to talk to Valdosta High School. Principal's very excited. The counseling department's very excited. And um, so what we need to do now is that we have all those people saying go for it, is to find the employers. And being from Atlanta, of course, I'm not gonna be able to know who those good targets are of companies in this area. And remember, they have to be kind of logistically close to the high school that we're working with. We do plan to go help uh, work with uh, about Lowndes County also. We're just starting at the city schools. We kind of like pilot it. How many hours a day do they work? Well, because they qualify for free and reduced price lunch, they need to be at school for lunch. So typically the school bus picks them up after lunch. And in some school districts, it's like 1230 and some it's 1, 130. They're, they're, they're scheduled for first lunch. So they get to the workplace between 1 and 130 and they work till 5. So on average, it's 15, 16, 17 hours a week. Yeah, what's the rate of pay? Um, it, it, would, it would be driven locally, but what we typically recommend is between $8 and $9 to start with. So it's above minimum wage, so it's appealing. But also there's room for the employer to do incentive raises for the kids to keep them in. And their raises are based on how they're progressing in school and how they're doing on the job. So they go hand to hand. So if they if they're not in school anymore, they can't be in GPP. If they are failing all their classes, we don't kick them out automatically, but we work to try to get them back on track academically. If they're just not doing anything, then we need to find another kid that's going to take advantage of it. So school is very closely um, tied into what happens on the job and vice versa. The school and the employer would have kind of what I call a coordinator on each campus that would talk a lot to each other to make sure the kids, because if they're not in school, they're not allowed to go to work and all those kinds of laws or rules. Um, so, and we keep them below the 27 hours regardless because like our kids at DCA, they work on, they come in during spring break, they're working in the summer, but we still keep them below that part-time um, threshold so that they don't qualify for benefits. Because the kids, if you think about it, they are eligible for other health benefits that, you know. Now, once they graduate from high school, then an employer can decide to keep them on because they are trained. And if they've done a great job, then that would be, you know, they kind of graduate from GPP and go into the workforce as a regular employee. But while they're in high school, we keep them under the part time. And they can work, if they're 16 or above, can work at a manufacturing Plant. Yes, now they can't do everything in a manufacturing plant. And we've been like talking to the poultry, some poultry uh, field all up North Georgia. Um, we're not going to have high school kids in, you know, butchering the, the, but there's lots of other things they can do, cleaning up, sweeping, you know, cleaning the um, trucks. So that's part of what I would help with or my staff would help with would be going in to say, this would be a totally inappropriate job. This we should steer clear of. Um, but but the kids at Southwire outperform the grown-ups. So there's really no limitations that I see so far um, other than, you know, legally or just safety-wise. Like, the kids will surprise you, totally. The kids at DCA, um, they're doing presentations to the whole staff, you know, and there are 400 people that work at DCA. Or they've come up with different ideas to change how, like, you ask for IT support and everything, they've totally changed it. So we're hoping that the company would treat them as much like a regular employee and give them as much room to grow, but they're certain, like, they can't drive a forklift. I mean, that's a law, that's an OSHA requirement, so they can't do everything. But what Southwire did was they got the hand lifts, you know, the ones that are, you just pull by hand. But I think what was interesting that you really talk about, if you talk about the mentoring from the company that I thought was really nice as well, is that the company really adopts the children as their own. Um.